morning, church. It is so good to be on your screens again this morning. Why don't you join with us in worship? Come on. The Lord is my shepherd, and he goes before me. Defender behind.
let's get ready to hear the word of God. Get your Bibles ready, get your heart ready, get your notepads ready, get a cup of tea ready as we lean in to the word of God together. Hey church, it's so good to be with you again here on Sunday morning. You know, I don't know about you, obviously restrictions are beginning to lift now, but I'm daily looking at the travel restrictions and what countries are in the green list and the amber list. I am so desperate to go on holiday, not been for a long time now, but I'm interested to, to know how do you pack your case? Now, Philip always packs our case because he manages to fit in uh, a lot more than I can because I have this big bulge in the middle whenever I pack it. And sometimes I even have to leave like toiletries behind thinking, do you know what, I'll buy them when I get there because I want to fit that extra pair of shoes in my suitcase. So how do you pack your suitcase? What do you carry? Serving as an explosive ordnance disposal officer for several years, Abram Lee says this of his job. The stakes of that job were life or death, and the demands on an assault team member were substantial. We would often hike very long distances in very hostile climate conditions, often under the threat of an even more hostile enemy. It was critically important that every ounce of gear that we carried with us in some way contributed to our overall mission success. If it weren't going to be used, then it wasn't worth the effort to carry it. You see, in the same way that we pack our cases or we pack our handbag, in the same way we pack our life sometimes and we have this baggage that we carry in our life. And there are so many things that we insist on putting in our bag. And as you all know, the heavier the case is, the heavier, obviously, the more stuff you put in, the heavier the case is. How many times have you got to that weighing scales and you are kind of holding your breath, dreading seeing that weight clock up in case you get charged? The heavier your handbag is, oh my gosh, it pulls down on your shoulder. Because the more stuff you put in your bag, the heavier it becomes. Exactly the same in life. Our bag that we carry through life, if we keep putting stuff in it and carrying stuff that we don't need to carry, it'll get heavier and heavier, weigh us down, slow us down, and eventually maybe even stop us in our tracks. Negative attitudes, stresses, uh, anxiety, anger towards others, bitterness, unforgiven are all things that we put in our bag that can weigh us down. Our emotional cargo builds so quietly and steadily that often we don't really notice how heavy our weight is becoming. Day after day, week after week, month after month, we pile stuff into our lives, never getting rid of it. And slowly but surely, the weight is on our hearts, on our minds and slows us down. You see, often when things uh, happen to us, we end up carrying them sometimes for years on end. Our past, we maybe don't deal with our issues and we choose to carry them. And our past and our current circumstances, we just shove in this bag and it continues to affect the way we live today. We learn things like denial, unforgiveness, revenge, bitterness, holding grudges. We actually like to keep some of those things. You see, when we carry these things, they grow inside of us and then they start to grow out of us. It's like Japanese knotweed. I don't know if you've ever had that in your garden. Once it takes hold, it grows rapidly, grows strongly, and before you know it, it suppresses all the other healthy plants around it. Often we allow things spoken of us or things done to us to define who we are and who maybe we think we can become. So today I want to look at uh, some people who have allowed what they are carrying their hearts to affect the promises that God had over their lives. Now to give you the background, Moses had just led the Israelites out of slavery in Egypt Through the miracle of the Red Sea, we all know that story. And they'd been traveling through the desert. And as they journeyed, they were journeying to the promised land. They'd now arrived at the border of the land God had promised them, the land of Canaan. 
And God had directed them and, uh, to go into the land. But Moses was a little nervous and decided to send 12 men into the promised land to check it out before they entered. The story can be found in Numbers 13. I'm not going to read it uh, for the sake of time, but obviously go ahead and read it. I'll just cut into it as we go along. But what we see from this story is what the uh, children of Israel, or what the spies particularly, were carrying in their lives had a massive influence on the way they proceeded forward. And the first thing that it affected was their perspective. How can 12 men be sent into the same land, see the same things, experience the same environment, but yet come back with two completely different stories? I believe it's because of what they were carrying and it affected their perspective. A shoe manufacturer who decided to open in the Congo market sent two salesmen to the undeveloped territory. One salesman uh, came back and said, prospects here are nil. No one wears shoes. The other salesman reported enthusiastically, market potential terrific. Everyone is barefoot. You see, you can tell if people have dealt with stuff in their life with how they see or how their perspective is on the current issues. You've probably heard hurting people hurt and what goes around comes around. That's because when you don't deal with issues in your life, they get deep-rooted. And sometimes when certain circumstances come your way, the default is to go back to those deep-rooted hurts maybe and the default is for revenge, broken grudges, holding grudges, sorry. You know, he hurt me, so I'll hurt him, unforgiveness, etc. The ten spies gives us huge clues into what they were carrying and what they said. So let me run through a couple of the things they said. If you read Numbers 13, it shows you what they were carrying. They said, we can't attack these people, they're too strong for us. Doubt had set in. They were carrying doubt. Doubt caused them to question their resources to take the land, as well as God who was heading, uh, leading them there. We, left as small as gr- we felt as small as grasshoppers, and that's how we must look to them. Self-deprivation. They saw themselves as teeny, tiny little grasshoppers about to be squashed by these big, bad giants. Joshua indicated in Numbers 14 that they were afraid. Fear, they were carrying fear. Now, fear naturally follows doubt and and fear paralyzes us and keeps us from acting. The writer of Hebrews 3 says this, So we see that when we were not able to enter because of their unbelief. Unbelief, they were carrying unbelief. All of these negative traits can be summed up in unbelief. In contrast, let's look at what Joshua and Caleb were carrying. They said, we should be more than able to conquer it. They were carrying faith. They believed in themselves and the fellow Israelites, and most importantly, they believed in the God that was leading them. Joshua said this, we have no reason to be afraid. They were carrying courage. He was not afraid of the giants, the wall cities, or the strength of the people, because he had the courage in God who had sent him. Concerning the, the Canaanite, Canaanites, Joshua said, the Lord is on our side and they won't stand a chance against us. They were carrying confidence. They had the confidence in the outcome because they knew they were doing the will of God. You see, when you haven't dealt with things in your life, when you are carrying certain traits in your life, like bitterness, fear, doubt, ungratefulness, maybe, it changes how you see the world. Suddenly, you see the situation as being bigger than you or bigger than God. Suddenly, you see yourself as being incapable. Suddenly, you start questioning God's ability. Sometimes an innocent comment can become so personal and so hurtful. Sometimes your justified behavior becomes, well, they started it. Suddenly, it comes, becomes about you. That's what happened to the Israelites. Because 10 of them were coming from a place of negativity, boy, did the world look different. And when the Israelites heard the two reports, 
they were persuaded to follow the majority. Can you imagine being on the brink of the promised land and then wanting to return to the slavery? But that's exactly what they did because what they were carrying in their hearts was influencing them to rebel and instead of reaching for all God had for them, all they wanted to do was go back to slavery and to misery. It's all about perspective. When Goliath came against the Israelites, the soldiers all thought, he's too big, we'll never kill him. But David looked at the same giant and thought, he's so big, I can't miss. So what you're carrying will affect your perspective. This is a by-the-way issue, if you like, or a, a secondary point. Only 12 men went into the promised land, yet millions spent 40 years in the wilderness. You see, the millions listened to the reports of the 10, and their perspective was changed too. Whenever we go on holiday, I don't know about you, especially if you're a mum, you will know that there's one bag that gets heavier as the travel goes on. And that's normally mum's bag, my bag, because everybody is like gets something and puts it in my bag. And before I know it, my bag is twice as full as it was when I started. Be careful whose uh, baggage you start to carry. Sometimes our friends and our families can start offloading stuff onto us. And before we know it, it is something that has now become part of our baggage and something that is starting to weigh us down. Have you been, uh, ever met somebody for the first time and the next thing you hear something about that person and all of a sudden you're making a judgment? You have listened to the perspective of somebody and you have started to carry that perspective. So what you carry affects your perspective. What you carry will also affect your pace. It should have taken 11 days for the Israelites to reach the promised land, but instead it took over 40 years. You see, when you carry stuff, when you don't deal with things, it causes you to slow down and it makes moving forward very difficult. You can see in a, in, a, in a race, either a bobsleigh race or a yacht race or even jockeys, isn't it? They try to get the least amount of weight in the boat or, you know, the jockeys slim down, got to be small, the least amount of weight on the horse because weight is as important as the power. Hebrews 12 says this, Therefore, since we are surrounded by a huge crowd of witnesses to the life of faith, let us strip off every weight that slows us down, especially the sin that so easily trips us up. And let us run with endurance the race God has set before us. God can't bless your mess. He can't bless unforgiveness. He can't bless judgment. He can't bless getting even. Luke 6 says, don't judge others and God won't judge you. Don't be hard on others and God won't be hard on you. Forgive others and God will forgive you. Romans 12 says, don't hit back. Discover beauty in everyone. If you've got it in you, get along with everyone. Don't insist on getting even. That's not for you to do. Hey, this is easier said than done, right? I won't tell you the number of times I've wanted to take somebody's head off when they've upset me or done something against me or, or my family. I kind of, you know, you watch these programs about revenge and you conjure up all these stories in your mind of what you would do. Someone once told me, don't fight, move forward. You see, whilst we can expel energy on our hurts, our disappointments, on revenge, we can't move forward. In fact, we actually slip back. So if we're not reaching our promised land, if we're not reaching what God has called us to do, if you're not living in God's fullness, maybe we need to look into your bag and see the stuff that you've packed in there. So what you carry affects your pace. But lastly, it also affects your purpose. Some Israelites never reached the land that God had promised, not even Moses. How sad is that? Being brought out of slavery in Egypt, being part of the miracle of the crossing of the Red Sea, being promised a land flowing with milk and honey only to miss out last minute. And why? Because they allowed things in their lives to affect their journey. 
The way to miss God's will is really simple. Ignore what God is saying. You see, God told the Israelites that he would deliver them. In Exodus 5, he said he would deliver them. But instead of listening to and believing in God and moving into what God had promised them, the Israelites listened to and believed men and moved away from what God had promised them. You see, when you allow the negative thoughts and feelings from past experiences to push in, when you allow current circumstances to push in, you then push God out. That is why Proverbs is very direct and says, above all else, guard your heart for it determines the course of your life. So what we carry affects our perspective. What we carry in our life uh, um, affects our pace. And what we carry in our life will affect our purpose. So very quickly, what you need to do to unpack your bag. Firstly, be confident, sorry, confront the past honestly. We cannot change what has happened to us. We cannot change sometimes the circumstances that are happening around us. But we can change how we view it and how we allow it to still control our lives. Philippians 3 says, I forget about the things behind me and reach out for the things ahead of me. We can be aware of our thoughts. Whenever you recognize that your mind is wandering and that you're starting to put all this negative stuff back into your bag, stop. Remember, thoughts leads to emotions. Emotions lead to actions. So don't allow your energy to be wasted in negative thinking. Philippians 4 says this, fix your thoughts on what is true, honorable, right, pure, and lovely. Think about things that are excellent and worthy of praise. Then start anew. Take positive steps to remove all the old habits and all the old routines that are creating this kind of uh, existence. 2 Corinthians 5 says, Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, he is a new creation. Old things have passed away. Get them out of your bag. Whatever hurts, whatever words, whatever emotions you are carrying, pull them out of the bag. They're gone. The new has come. Then forgive others. Forgiving others will do you more good than it will do them. You know, we can carry so many past hurts, so many past things that have happened to us. But if we forgive them, we can then move on. Ephesians 4 says, make a clean break. With all cutting, backbiting, profane talk, be gentle with one another, sensitive, forgive one another as quickly and thoroughly as God has forgiven you. And choose your friends wisely. You don't want the type of friends who ask you to carry their stuff. I mean, if you're ever on holiday and you've got a friend like that, it's like, nah, get your own bag. So choose your friends wisely. Surround yourself with people who will nourish you, those that are not toxic and harmful for you. If you're not sure how to identify these people, then listen to what they talk about. Listen to who they talk about. Listen to what they say and how they say it. Look at their actions. Check out how they are with their own issues. Luke 6 says, a good man brings good things out of good stored up in their heart. And an evil man brings evil things out of the evil stored up in the heart. From the mouth speaks what the heart is full of. And lastly, know what God says about you. Remember, he loves you. He accepts you. He cares about you. He has not forgotten about you. He sees you. He knows you. He provides for you. He will not abandon you. He will not abuse you. He will not forsake you. He will help you and transform you. He will choose to forget your past. He will heal your pains. He will hold your hand and he will restore you. So in closing, be careful what you're carrying in the baggage of life. Correct your perspective. Keep up the pace and walk in your purpose. Remember, God is waiting for you to come to him and with all that you are so that he can give you all that he is. Amen.
you for this service, Lord. We thank you for the word. We thank you for the worship. We thank you, Lord, for everything that you are to us. Praise your holy name. Church, thank you for joining with us. Thank you for everything. Thank you for your giving. If you want to carry on with that, the links are at the bottom of the screen. If you want to anything in the week, if you need us in any week, I want to share anything with us. The links are at the bottom of the screen. And straight after the service at 11.15, if you want to join with us on Zoom, bring a tea and a coffee where we can just chat and enjoy each other's company. The links again are at the bottom of the screen. Take a wonderful time for yourself this week. I pray that you'll be blessed. I pray that God will be with you. I pray that you will have a wonderful week. Take care.